Hello, today I want to talk about planting the right vegetables at the right time. Let's talk about the right vegetables. What do I mean by the right vegetables? Well if I'm talking about the right vegetables for me and my family, I want to grow vegetables that I know will get eaten and I want to grow vegetables that I know I can grow. So, let's talk about vegetables that I know we will eat. I know we'll eat beetroot, Brussels sprouts, broad beans, carrot, celery. I know what we'll eat and I know what we'll eat by checking what's on the veg rack, what's in the house. I'm only growing in buckets and bags and three raised beds and I can't grow sufficient vegetables to last me the whole year. I can only grow vegetables in season and so there are no storage issues and we eat them because there aren't that many of them but we do eat them and the worst thing that I could do is grow vegetables that nobody wants to eat and the worst thing that you could do is grow vegetables that nobody wants to eat. So the first thing to do if you're new to gardening, if you're new to growing vegetables at all, have a look at what you've got indoors right now. Check it out. If you've got potatoes indoors, hey, you should be growing potatoes. If you've got carrots indoors, you should be growing carrots. If you have a look in the veg drawer in the fridge and there's lettuce in there uh, and there's perhaps some peas in there, courgettes, cucumbers, you maybe want to give those a go. Um, just see what you've got indoors now and that's what you're buying and that's what you don't want to buy when the vegetables are in season because you're going to be growing them. How good is that? That's easy. That's easy. Now when you pick your packets of seed up uh, and you look at the seed and you decide should I buy this or shouldn't I buy this if you've never eaten that particular vegetable before you have a choice to make. Should you try and grow it? Should you see if someone will eat it? And if when you take them indoors, if you're successful and nobody eats them, <laughs> and you've got some buckets full of the stuff, or a raised bed full of the stuff, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I think it's probably better that you stay with the vegetables that you're already familiar with, that you know people will eat. That's what you should be growing. Does that make sense? Okay. Now that's um, what you should be growing. But how do you know you can grow those vegetables? I'm going to cut you to some screenshots of vegetables that I've grown over the years. And this is what I'm growing here in the United Kingdom. If I can grow it, you can grow it if you're in, if you're in the United Kingdom. If you're anywhere else in the world, provided your climate is similar to ours, you can grow those things in your garden, in buckets, in beds, in pots. If your climate's a lot hotter, then you can maybe go for something a bit more exotic. One thing I've tried to grow and never managed it over the years is sweet potato. I'd love to grow sweet potatoes, but I can't because it's not hot enough here in the United Kingdom. Uh, and I guess the, uh, the clue to this is that if you look in the stores, if you look at sweet potatoes, where have they come from? The southern states of America were shipping these things thousands of miles. Do you think we would do that if we could grow them ourselves? Do you think farmers wouldn't cotton onto this and say, hey, we can grow these? But they can't because our climate isn't right. So there are some things you can grow and there are some things you can't grow. And if I show you what I can grow here in the United Kingdom, if you're in the United Kingdom, you can grow it. If you've got a climate similar to the United Kingdom, you can still grow it. If your climate's totally to one side of us, a lot colder, a lot hotter, a lot drier, a lot wetter, then you might need to think about some other vegetables. How's that? Now then, Last one before I start and cut you to some of these screenshots. Uh, when's the right time? When's the right time to plant vegetables? When's the right time to sow seeds? Well, I've got to tell you. Have you been out today? Have you had your walk? Have you, have you had your Covid exercise? Well, I've been out. 
it's Baltic. Yeah, it's Baltic. And as my mate would describe it, the wind is so cold, it's a puss cutter. That's how cold it is out there. So don't run away with the ideas you're going to be planting seed or planting plants outdoors right now here in the United Kingdom or anywhere else in the world for that matter if it's still winter and it is still winter and we are being visited currently by the beast from the east too just when you thought it was safe to go out in your garden and plant seeds and plants the beast from the east too comes and spoils all that but there is a way around it you can actually um, jump start your growing season by planting seed indoors. I've done it and I'm going to show you some of the examples of that and I've done it on damp tissue and I've done it in um, soil and compost. Check out these, uh, these onions and leeks and check out this um, potato. That I've, I've got all these indoors on windowsills. I can get away with it because they're only in small yoghurt pots. Never get away with it if they're in buckets. Check these out. These are some of the seeds I've already sown this year. I've sown them indoors and as you can see I've sown them in soil, I've sown them in compost. I've got none to show you on tissue just yet this year but I know I will be starting some seeds on tissue later in the year. Um, this is a leek called Leon. This is an onion called Walla Walla and this is a potato that hasn't actually broke through yet and it's a potato called Jazzy. There would be no point in planting these outdoors or in the greenhouse because these seeds wouldn't germinate and this potato wouldn't grow because it's just too cold. Okay, so that's what I've got started indoors. Right, let's have a look at some of the stuff we grew um, in previous years and what we're going to be growing this year. Beetroot. Yep, yeah, you can definitely germinate this indoors on tissues. And you can definitely grow it in buckets. Brussels sprouts. I didn't grow any of these last year uh, and I, I do get a lot of cabbage white butterflies in the garden so it's a bit of a battle with these uh, but I'm going to give Brussels sprouts a go uh, this year and I'm going to be sowing some of these seeds indoors shortly. That's Brussels sprouts. Broad beans and French climbing beans. I grew some broad beans last year. Uh, it wasn't a big success. I didn't grow any of these uh, climbing beans because I find the gardens just too too windy, too drafty. They get blown off the canes. But we're going to give these another go this year and I'll be sowing some of these in modules indoors shortly. Carrots. Yep, yeah, I've grown lots of these over the years. These can definitely be grown in buckets, 
celery. I've grown celery in uh, buckets before. These must be the smallest seeds, the smallest vegetable seeds I've ever seen. They are very small. Um, and it isn't a five minute job when you grow celery, it's, it's, it's an all year job. So you plant the, you start these seeds off and then you, you plant them up as the weather picks up. Um, but we're talking months and months and months and months before you get a result from celery. Cabbages and cauliflower. Uh, for the same reason that I gave you with the Brussels sprouts, I haven't tried these for a number of years just because of the, the butterflies I get in the garden. Chap next door has got a buddleia, a buddleia bush which attracts them and then they just pop over the fence and before I know where I'm at these are covered in caterpillars. But um, I've ticked the must try harder box. Yeah, must try harder with these. I need to get some fleece over them. So I'm going to give these a go, uh, but I haven't started any off just yet. Courgette, zucchini if you would prefer that. I grew some of those last year, not very well, but I didn't put a lot of effort into them. I grew some cucumbers in the greenhouse and I was well pleased with those. Just a small variety, I think they're only about five to six inches long. And from one plant I got um, 20 or so cucumbers. So I was very I was pleased with that and I'll be growing cucumbers again. Uh, this year and these courgettes but again it's still far too early to sow these seeds even indoors because then I would need to get them outdoors when they were big enough uh, and we need to get further along the uh, further along the track in terms of growing season we're still in winter here we need to get into spring of the year tomatoes yeah we grew those last year in the greenhouse I was quite happy with the results we got there Uh, we had just a, a couple of tomatoes with blossom end rot. Uh, but I think I've, I've fathomed out how, how to beat that this year. So I'm looking forward to starting the tomato seeds off. Again I'll do them indoors, uh, grow them on, on a windowsill. before bringing them out and potting them up. So these are the, uh, these are the tomatoes. Curly kale, it's a number of years since I've grown this, in fact the last time I grew this uh, the, dogs <laughs> the dogs came to visit and one of them decided he'd like to eat kale and it was eating all my kale so I never actually got any. Uh, but I'm going to give uh, this curly kale another go this year. I'll be starting some of those shortly. Some lettuce I'll be growing this year. I did grow some last year. Um, I grew those as part of my square foot bucket garden. Uh, there'll probably be a screenshot somewhere in this presentation. If you want to know more about square foot bucket gardens, just search on square foot bucket garden and, and, and you'll find the videos that I shot through the year. So yeah, we'll be giving lettuce a go again uh, this year. This is the onion that I grew last year and the year before, Elsa Craig. I've had some excellent results from this onion, uh, but so far this year I haven't managed to get any of the seeds to germinate. I think I may need to. Um, look at a new packet of seeds, perhaps the, the seeds are not viable anymore. But Elsa Craig was an excellent onion for me. An excellent onion. Well, you'll see from the screenshots.
tried these for the first time last year. These uh, zebra and shallots, variously known as chicken leg shallots and banana shallots, as you can, you can see why from the shape of them. I must admit, I didn't make a very good job of that. Uh, and that's another tick in the box, must try harder box for this year. That's zebra and shallots. These are the ordinary shallots. These are my shallots. They've been sat in these water buckets now for about two weeks. I don't think they've uh, started to germinate just yet. Five in that one. Four in that one. Why five in that one and four in that one? Because there was nine in the packet. I just divided them. It's a red sun. Uh, I think they're a, a golden shallot. Um, but yeah, we're going with the shallots again. Leeks, yeah, you can definitely grow leeks in buckets and bags and beds. I've done it. I've done it. And I'll be doing it again this year. Parsnips, yeah, there is, these can be germinated indoors and transferred. I've, I've done that on a number of occasions. Uh, on damp tissue. I've grown them in raised beds and I've grown them in buckets. Peas, I grew some peas last year. We're going to give these another go this year. Uh, again, I haven't started these off because they'll just get ahead of themselves. Then I'll need to get them outdoors and it'll be too cold. And You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my powder dry on a lot of these seeds so far. Potatoes, what are these? Kestrel, ho ho ho. You must have a go at growing potatoes in buckets and bags. You just must, you've got to. They're a staple and they're easily grown, at least I find them easy to grow here in the United Kingdom uh, because our climate is right for them. If your climate is much hotter than our climate, you may struggle with these. But if you're in the United Kingdom or a, a cooler, part of the world uh, where temperatures to where it isn't too hot yeah potatoes in buckets yeah you've got to you've got to give these guys a go These are Swedes, part of the turnip family. I've never successfully grown these in buckets, but I have grown them in, in a raised bed. And yet, yeah, we're going to give these another go this year. I 
I've also grown sweet corn. It must be said, not very successfully. I mean, it grew, and it, I grew them in these water buckets, one, one plant to each bucket. And I think I may have had a dozen buckets, and I think the sweet corn got to about five or six foot tall. And each of the plants had two or three cobs on there. But to be honest, the pollination was poor. And I did get lots of advice about brushes and brown paper bags and do it this way and do it that way. But to be honest, it was just too windy and too wet the year that I grew that sweet corn. And each morning when I went to have a look at them, I'm fairly sure that any pollen was in the next door neighbour's garden by the time I got there. So, you know, I couldn't help the sweet corn. But they did grow, but I just wasn't that successful with them. The only strawberries that I've grown for a number of years have been alpine strawberries, the wild strawberries. This is a couple of my uh, strawberry plants. I only got these last year. These have never fruited yet. I planted them in autumn. Um, and they're just standing now in winter. They're in the greenhouse. There are some new shoots appear in the middle of the plant, but growth very slow. But it's as you would expect at this time of year, there's not much growing. So that's a couple of my uh, strawberry plants. Fingers crossed, come spring and summer, we'll be eating strawberries maybe through into the autumn, who knows. Four cloves of garlic growing in this, uh, in this bucket. It's quite solid. It's freezing outdoors. Um, this garlic doesn't seem to have grown much in the last month or two. But yeah, we are in winter, that's what you'd expect. But this is standing outdoors, this is uh, winter hardy. No problems with garlic. That's no problem so far. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I've shown you what I've grown over the years, I've shown you what I intend growing this year. Um, but hey, it's your choice. You're the gardener, you decide what it is you want to grow. But just try and get your timing right, so that when you sow the seeds, it's warm enough for the seeds to germinate. And when you plant them out, it's warm enough that the plants won't just get killed by a frost. Yeah, just be careful with that. And only grow the stuff you're going to eat. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. Okay, so stay safe, stay in your garden, plant loads of vegetables. This is Homegrown Veg, signing out.